Right, okay, it seems to be better now. I'm waiting for everyone to join in. I'm just going to try and um, I need to bring up another screen in a sec. Let's see if I can get this. Um, why can't it? Is this something? Oh, isn't it? Something to do with the menus, maybe. There's a way of fixing this for some reason. Show the current image full screen mode now. You got a bit of buzz oh a bit of buzz on the audio and doesn't seem very loud, but possibly because you were talking softly at the moment. Let me just check the levels. Um, it does look slightly lower than usual. I try shouting and I'm not hitting the red line, which is unusual. Hold on. Um, let me see if you can do anything about that. One, two, three. Hold on. One, two, three. No, one, no. About as high as we can get it, really. Unless. One, two, three. Does seem lower. One, two, three. Let me just have a listen on the headphones. Hold on. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't want the feedback on there. Uh, trouble is, I can't hear it properly because I'm also using this as an audio output. Damn. Uh, I wonder what changed. I haven't changed the settings as far as I can tell. Unless. Um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know if that's making any difference at all, no. Um, that will have to do, I can't get any more volume on it. Um, can you still hear a buzz, did you say? Just while I'm sort, sorting this image out, bear with me. Um, it might have been the connector to the microphone. The XLR cable I've got is a little bit dodgy on this one. 
Now, there was something else with this um, image viewer. Something to do. For some reason, I can't get. I've got an image viewer with the images I need to show you guys, and I can't. That's not coming up. There's an OBS um, view. Now it's something to do with the um, the way that the uh, window set up. If I remember rightly, let's look at my preferences. Oh, why won't you appear? You were naughty window, you were very naughty window. Sort of window it is. Uh, let's have a look at the window setting. Always invisible workspace. No. Damn it. This is crazy. that I've got this set up wrong. Hmm. Bear with me, just a few technical problems, thanks. <sighs> All I'm trying to do is to get you guys a view on um, on some of the images I've got in here. So it's really weird. It's not um, picking up the image at all. That's insane. How's everyone doing anyhow? Oh, the buzz is gone apparently. Um, and the audio level seems a bit better. Good stuff. Um, I will continue. I'm just trying to work out. I'm, I'm opening some images just using the default um, image viewer. But for some really strange reason, doesn't show up when I try and capture the window. Um, I wonder if there's something else I can use. I don't really want to run GIMP. Bear with me. This is an old <laughs> Linux Unix thing. Crikey. 
Um, uh, I do apologise folks, hold on. Let's just have a look at this. This isn't working very well. I'm failing at being able to use any kind of operating system to open images. Well, the strange thing is, the image is open, I just can't get it to show up on OBS because it there's something strange about the way that this window, the application that this window, the way it's using it, and I wonder if maybe. Uh, I'm not sure I can do anything about the settings. Image properties, print slideshow, no, show. Image side panel, status bar. Side panel. if that makes any difference. Sorry, this is just a technical hitch. Don't normally have this kind of problem. God, that's so annoying. Um, <sighs> right. I used a different approach. Hold on. something else I can use here that does images. Hold on.
anyone else has these problems with uh, OBS Windows? Uh, I'm actually on Linux, so it's not a Windows problem. Always on top. And if that makes any difference. So, yes, we want to do that. No. It's just not coming up, folks. This is really, really frustrating. Um, how very annoying. Right, let me do it manually, hold on, one image at a time. So what I wanted to do was just show you, um, so let me just talk through where we are and then I'll just show you the images individually I guess. So um, I made all the changes to the boards for the ILB board, the Ice Logic Plus, um, and the Black Ice Next board, Black Ice NXT. So that meant I migrated the um, power delivery circuitry from the uh, Black Ice NXT board down onto the Ice Logic Bus, which is where it should be in the first place, given the changes. Um, I also changed back or reverted to the previous um, power delivery version of the chip. And I did make a slight change in the power arrangement, but I think everything. It's almost identical to the version, the December version of that part of the circuitry. So I'm fairly confident about it. Now these boards I've ordered are effectively final. I've ordered, uh, I think 125 boards uh, to get started with, um, of each Black Ice Next and the Ice Logic board with a view to building these up um, I'm going to build a small number first, and it's going to be on a first come, first served basis. Um, I've also reduced the size of the Black Ice NXT board, so it covers less of an area. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, where's my board gone? So this is was the previous size, if you remember. Um, so the new size loses all of the um, prongs and apertures, and it reduces it um, down to a simple rectangle, which is, I mean, this the dimensions from top to bottom on 100 and side to side are 100, but the overall dimensions of the new rectangle, which sits within this is uh, I think 80 by 60 so it's a quite a significant production uh, and I've added all the blades in instead of the uh, p-mods because we can still do p-mods on the adapters if you remember rightly um, using the uh, tile adapters like these he said, oh, I've managed to um, disconnect the pins here. Come on, 
which is another the pins. So this, for example, is the double uh, proto mod tile, which is proto area, and then it also has these P mods built in as well that you can populate optionally. So we can do tile to P mods basically. That's the point of that. Um, what other changes were on there? Those are the major changes. So those have all been ordered. So I'm just going to go through and review what I had on that order and show you the um, the relevant ones. So let me just switch screens here, see if we can't get some of these up. Let me just check uh, Laurie's mentioned some things. Can you open the image in the browser? Yeah, I can, if, if required. Um, did you fix the debug connector? I have fixed the debug connector. Um, prompt me again when I've got that open and I'll just talk about that. Um, um, were you making some LED changes? Yes, I made a few of those as well. So, for instance, on the uh, Ice Logic board, um, we don't really need a power indicator when there's a power indicator on the mezzanine board, anyhow. So, that what was connected to the green of the RGB LED on the Ice Logic bus is now connected to the chip select. And just as a reminder of why this is important is because the the red part of the RGB LED is connected to the done state. So if that's red, it means it's not programmed or it's being programmed. Uh, and then that ex ex extinguishes. But normally, um, because we had the green LED as a power LED, um, the only remaining colour we had for Blinky was the blue LED. Now, of course, because the green was on all the time, the dump pin is extinguished because the, the FPGA is programmed. Then when you run Blinky, it flashes between green and blue, but it's a, such a subtle difference between the two, it's barely noticeable and it's just not a very good thing. So what I'm doing is, rather than having that being powered by uh, just power on, I'm having that controlled by the CS pin. So when the CS pin, that's the CS chip select, to the input of the um, ICE logic, but sorry, to the ICE 40, when it's been programmed, when that pin's pulled down, that LED goes on. So when it's being programmed, that LED, the green LED comes on. So when it's being programmed, when you start off, your red LED's on, because the done isn't set. Then the CS pin gets pulled down, so the green goes on, so then it goes amber. Um, the green may flash on and off, depending on what stage it is in the programming. But then, once it's been programmed, the CS goes high again, so the green LED goes off, and then the dump pin extinguishes as well, so you've then got no LEDs on. So when you blink, if you're blinking the LED, you'll just see the blue LED blinking. So yeah, that's that's the way I've re rewired the um, the LED on the ICE logic bus now to avoid the issue that we had before of not being able to discern the difference of when the FPGA is activating the LED. And that activation line is the interrupt line anyhow as well, by the way. But it's also useful as a, my first blinky. So that's changed there. So let's um, just open up a browser then. Let's see if we can do it that way. Um, okay, let's open up
so very annoying. work that's so damn annoying I just accidentally opened it in the browser and um, it used the operating system image viewer to open it rather than the browser window so we were back exactly where we started which is really really very frustrating um, let me there must be a way of opening this here is so damn annoying. Wait a minute, can I open it from, let me open it from the folder directly. Let's do it this way. That will do for the moment. Right, can you see that, guys? And I can probably use the cursor here as well. So, um, let's do the This one first. So this is the um, the ice ice logic bus, the new version of the ice logic bus. Um, the key thing here is that um, the major changes are you can see on this edge here. Uh, I put a power connector there, which is an optional thing that can be added later if we need to. But um, the power delivery USB chip is on the left-hand side here, if you can see that. That is a, the new type, excuse me, a new type of connector, um, which I'm ordering in, that I had some samples of, that I purchased some samples of, should I be? Um, and this is designed really for power delivery, but it doesn't have any data, for example. It just has the CC pins and the power pins delivery pins that um, is connected to this little chip here which is very similar to the um, a generation ago version of the board which we did in December which is the USB power delivery control um, which we control over I squared C so that's now living on the um, ice logic board sorry ice logic bus and powers the uh, the logic bus directly. So obviously we're looking at it from the top. You can't see the connectors, but they're actually um, underneath here. Um, I've moved the logo to the edge here so it's more visible. Now the dotted line you see here, can you see this? This is where the mezzanine board edges are when it sits on top of the ice logic bus. So you can see that it is the same height as the inside rectangle here, 
but it doesn't extend all the way off to the edges. That's what I mean by it being 80 across, whereas the honest logic board is 100 across, and 60 from top to bottom, which is the same side as the inner rectangle of this board. And then it has some smaller connect through uh, unpadded connections uh, to secure it. Um, I think those are the major changes really. I don't think there's anything else that's different on this. Um, there wasn't a great deal of um, need to change this. This has all been working wonderfully. One other thing I've done by the way is this is the LED for the ILB. It's right down here in the bottom left hand corner. Before that was up here. So what's going to happen is when you look at the um, these are going to be in very different positions they're further apart than they are on the current uh, configuration that I've got um, you know below so that makes it clearer as to um, what the status is of the relative boards um, not only that because this is up front you see this state whereas the um, the LED for the um, Black Ice NXT board is up on this, the top, top left hand side. And that will reflect down onto this area here. So that's actually set back just slightly. One other thing to notice is this triangle here. Can you see this triangle? That's an indicator triangle. So we know how to align with the top Black Ice NXT board. Because I continually confuse myself with the current uh, prototype I've got as to which way bound it goes it just uh, it's not intuitive but having this triangle here and I can match that and you'll see a corresponding triangle on the um, black ice NXT board so let's just go to the uh, NXT board so the black ice NXT board let me just remind you here is that triangle again down in the bottom left so what happens is the way that you're viewing that now you'd flip it rotate it like that yeah, you're flipping it on its horizontal axis when it goes down onto the board. So these things stay on the left hand side. This remains on the left, this remains on the right. Left and right remain left and right. What we're happening, what we're flipping is top and bottom by inverting this so it's facing down. And that symbol matches up with the symbol on the ILB. Uh, this symbol is also repeated on the other side of this, this board. So you can see it when it's upside down because it's upside down when you place it on there, obviously. Um, so that helps with the uh, confusion. Um, what else have I changed on here? So we've got the LED again is at this, the extreme edge. Now that looks like it's in the same place as the ILB. It is, except this board gets flipped. So it ends up at the top at the bottom um, and the mode button appears adjacent to uh, the top uh, aperture the top tile aperture um, you don't normally use use this mode button much is my thinking but you can get to it if you need to it's actually very easily uh, the other thing that's moved at the top here is the um, debug connector um, we were being asked about that earlier. Laurie asked me a question. So what I've done is I've kept it there. So if you want to use the right angled connector, you can uh, still do so if you want to use one of these little baby ones. But normally what you do is you'd put one of the smaller ones, which I showed last week, into the um, rear of the board so that you can access it from the top. And I can't see the connector that I looked at before, maybe. Entirely possible. So basically I've enabled it so it can be used in either, one, either, either method. Um, oh. 
So in other words, I, I've fixed it so you can use it on board or you can use it on the back of the board, you know, on this side. So that, that solves both problem and also um, uh, complies to iPost's request to be able to do it with either of the connectors. I don't know what I've done with that. I lost it. It's annoying. Anyhow, uh, the other major change that you'll notice here, I mean, obviously I've had to shuffle a few things around to fit things in, uh, primarily the USB here, um, are the micro blades. Now, the one at the top up here, uh, sorry, up here, that is your normal SD card connector that connected to the STM32 F7. So you can put your normal card in, SD card in here. Now this one, this one, this one, and this one are micro blades. And you can place your micro blades into these. Ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk. You've got four of those micro blades. And they replace the old P mods, the extra P mods, which I didn't like having on the mezzanine board. It just seemed pointless, particularly when we can add them onto tiles if, if necessary by the adapters. Um, those are the big changes on those two boards. Um, I don't think there was anything else significant that I changed, quite frankly. I had to reroute some signals and things to make it all work. And I had to route all of the microblade stuff, but pretty much everything else stayed and behaved as it ought. I tell you what, I do notice the quality of this image in the browser looks terrible compared to the image viewer. I wonder why that is same damn image it looks really coarse on here but on the image view it looks really good okay so um, those have been ordered as well um, I also got rid of some bits and pieces obviously the power delivery stuff isn't on the um, black ice next board now because it's on the um, on the ice logic bus but I also used the opportunity to remove a few other components as well, just to reduce the component count. Did a bit of simpl simplification. Um, Laurie saying, have you made any microblades yet? Have you got one for testing? Well, I have ordered some prototype ones that I can do some tests with. So let's have a look at those. Um, so the simplest one is the LED one, I think. Shame we can't reduce the size of that. But there you go. So there is a um, very simple one. Um, so if you look carefully, the SD card part is here and see where the dotted line is that's really where the normal SD card um, edge would be if you like although it's not completely uh, a straight line it does have an angle to it um, this is where the edge of any SD card would likely be okay so this is really simple. I've just got some Mo 603 LEDs. One, two, three, four, five, six LEDs and some resistors. So that you can flash some LEDs and stuff. So I figured that would make a nice little prototype um, for six LEDs. So there's that one I've ordered. There is also, I have ordered, um, oh, I ordered a proto one. I can't see that on here. It's a shame. The proto one just has a um, Dual Row 6 pin header socket. 
and that's useful if you want to connect up things like um, a logic analyzer or a connector or just some DuPont cables so all it does it converts to um, basically a 2x6 header um, what else have we got we've got there's an OLED So this is the OLED microblade. So what 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 this has got here is um, this is an FPC connector that I've managed to cram in here. Uh, twenty four, I think it is. I can't remember. Twenty four pin FPC. So that enables a uh, you know a, an LCD or something like this for example to um, if I can get a focus on this because it's just using SPI uh, it only needs a six pins for the connection which fit nicely into a, a blade a micro blade hold on this might help this was the one I was using before. Remember when I had problems with all the connectors? Really doesn't want to um, focus, does it? I don't know why that is. It is funny like that sometimes. This, um, there you go. So that will just fit in. Um, I mean, you can see roughly size-wise of the two. It just fits. So that's the um, like an OLED blade. Now I've inverted the pins on that because the connectors I have. That I'm trying to reuse have a flipped um, it's for a face down cable so hopefully this should work but it is experimental these are only experimental these blades I haven't ordered large quantities just enough for us to do some testing basically and see if we can fit them in I'm sure we're gonna have to um, play it, tweak them to make these work so that's that one um, the other one that I've done is I've ordered some of these and these are the uh, ESP32 C3 blade adapters. Um, so in this case what we have here is a mini an ESP32 C3 mini module will fit on the edge and it will actually protrude over here you can't can't see that bit because it's not drawn onto the board and that will stick out here um, we've got some resistors and capacitors that are required in order for it to operate and we've got an LED as well to do blinky if we need to but basically what I connect out is a TX and RX line so we can program it um, then there is SPI plus one other GPIO pin which happens to be the same pin used to control the boot boot mode uh, of the C3 so that we can reprogram it. Well, that is the principle. But I've tried to cram it into six pins, so it's a, a little bit tricky. The way that we use those pins will probably be SPI and UART, although it could be quad SPI, for example, if we wanted it to be, because there's enough pins for that. Um, so I've ordered a few of those as well. So we're going to have some blades to play with. So that's all really cool. And I'm really looking forward to um, getting these because I think they're going to be kind of neat. And I think people are going to like these a lot. Any questions on those? So that's all the stuff I've ordered, basically. 
Um, I've got to put some more components on the order as well, which I've got to complete. Um, I've got to order some more power delivery components because the ones I've got I'm not using anymore, which is a bit of a waste, but I may reuse them on another project later. But basically, yeah. Um, so the ESP microblade, Wi-Fi microblade, slash Bluetooth, the uh, LCD slash OLED microblade, the LED microblade, there is also, as I said before, a proto blade which has a 0.1 inch dual row header output on it, and then obviously the ICE logic board. I don't know if you can read this here because it's not very clear. Can you see? So all of these boards are going to have on them a little tribute to you folks and also to uh, the folks at Yosis etc as well. I figured it would be nice to put their them on the board because none of this will be possible without you guys and, and those guys, guys and girls and folks and them. Okay, um, and obviously the shrunken down um, mezzanine, the black ice mezzanine. Do any questions on that or should we move on to the second part? I've no idea when they're going to come because obviously it's all still a bit chaotic. Particularly when with regard to um, shipments and stuff. But I will keep you informed on the streams about those. It's going to be a few weeks, whatever happens. So looking forward to that. Um, and basically, as I say, I mean, I'll talk more about it um, as we get nearer time. But um, I'm going to make a small quantity first um, by hand. And those will literally go out on a first come, first served basis. Um, if there are any issues, I will do replacements, etc. I'm hoping there won't be any issues. But you will need to let me know. I'll find a way of you either pre-ordering or making pledges, um, either through Tindy or, or something else, or maybe, um, depends what state it is in, um, electrons is a possibility as well. But we'll find a way of doing that so that we can do it on a first come, first serve basis on the initial um, initial set that we're going to make. It's only going to be a relatively small quantity I make first time around. So it needs to be people that are going to use it. Ayo London says, let me guess, I'm super late. You know, you're not that late. It's just uh, we actually kicked off on time for a change. But you can always go back and uh, check out. I don't know where, where you came in, Ayo. Um, I'm just showing what I've ordered. So this is the new version of the uh, Black Ice NXT board that's, that sits on a mezzanine. It's smaller. It's now got the microblades rather than the... Um, P mods on this end because we do can do the P mods via tile adapters. Um, the new version of the ICE logic board. Um, with the power delivery on it rather than on the black ice NXT board. And you can see the dotted line where the mezzanine fits on top, the black ice mezzanine. So it's slightly smaller and it doesn't have the protrusions at the ends. Um, and then some microblade board, boards I was just going through. Ale. So there's an LED microblade, uh, an LCD or OLED microblade, and a um, ESP32 C3 microblade. Um, the microblades are just prototypes at this point, I've ordered not final shipping ones, because we've got to test them first before I make a quantity.
quantity of those. But these two I've ordered in quantity. Um, not that one. This one and this one. There you are, caught up. Just far away questions if you're a bit lost, Dale. Right, so uh, if there's no more questions about that, I'm just going to move on to. Um, we need to do some. Uh, some of the firmware. And update the code base. Um, now, let me just sit back here. So, if you remember where we were uh, with firmware, the one of the things that I hadn't um, finished testing was the QSPY, and there was a list of to dos. And changes on that which we're gonna jump to in a sec but just to explain what the differences were between the December prototype and the uh, current prototype uh, the one that you see there um, is that rather than having separate pins for programming the ice 40 that we bit banged. Um, what I did was I combined the QSPI that we're using to communicate with the ICE 40 when we have a synthesis running in there. Uh, I combined with the programming pins. So basically, we're using Quad SPI plus an event pin or interrupt pin in this case. Um, you have to go back probably a few um, few streams. To see that in action but we we can talk about that a little today or this evening now because we're using qspi the plan was that i would either switch the modes between bit banging uh the programming signal into the ice 40 and then switching into qspi mode for the communication between the synthesized hardware and the STM32. This is the main bus communication, if you like. Um, and I kind of thought of a way that we could do that. Given that these pins are shared, um, I, I found a way of being able to switch the modes of the pins. You can do it kind of dynamically. Um, if you remember going way way back when I first started using the Rust how for the GPIOs um, every IO pin has its own type and that type will vary depending on what function is on it and you can't just you know swap between them like you can in C um, Laurie's saying, uh, I was looking at Gatecat's GitHub. See, they are working on a VR headset. Cool. Let's have a quick look at that. Sorry, this is, um, we're squirreling off. I know um, Gatecat wanted to work on this for a while. I remember him doing some work on augmented and VR stuff. Um, when he was at Imperial and after we left Imperial. So this is something he's wanted to do for ages. Meowality. Meow. Ality, I think that's meant to be. Cat-like. From these cat creatures, Creosome Mixed Reality. So a Crea K26. Uh, system on a module with an ultra scale plus FPGA. Ooh, 
4 times 1.5 gigahertz quarter tape 53s, 4 gigabyte PSDDR4. Wow, this is cool. 256K Ultra Scale Plus Logic Cells. Um, and they've got hard compression, video compression IP. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, LCDs, four lane, four lane mini display port connector on fabric. Wowzer, two lane M.2 connection for Wi Fi module on PSGTR, USB Type C connector with USB 2, PHY on PSMIO, and USB 3 on PSGTR. Well, this is really highly equipped, this is very cool. That's not going to be cheap. Um, nice. Yeah, can't wait to see that. I see they're both <laughs> contributors. That's funny. Um, wow. And what is he writing it in? Is he writing it in Verilog or is he writing it in... the hardware oh. so it's just a hardware at the moment cool we could take a look maybe Maybe, maybe, maybe. Just spin up um, KeyCAD. Oh, what's going on here? Let me get rid of that. That's annoying. Uh, open project. What did he call it? Meowality. Hold on. Bowser. So let me just show you this, guys, so that you can see. So that's the board. Wonder how big that is. Right, so you've got a USB C. That looks like a mini HDMI. Oh no, that's a that's a 32 pin USB C. That's a USB 3. That must be that's USB power connector, I think. That what the hell is that? Is that um Is that video? Deep uh, display port. It's a display port connector. Okay, cool. What else we got on here? So, um, is that for a daughter board? That's for the SOM. That must be the. Um, 
the kind of Linux daughter board. Oh, wait a minute, what's on this? Hmm. There's one of the M2 connectors. I guess most of the magic is on the daughter board. With these buttons, these look like buttons. Let's have a look at the schematic, hold on, so that I understand what's going on here. It does look interesting. Modules. Wowzer. Wow, it looks really cool. I know he's wanted to do this for ages, so. Nice. Um, SOM. Yeah, I don't know how much of it is actually on the SOM. Interesting. Uh, Laurie says they're writing it in their own HLS by the look of things. Uh, there are two DSi connected displays. I need to get DSi working on the ULX4M. Um, yeah, because that's on the. Um, that's one of the things that were exposed on the ULX4, isn't it? Just like. Um, on the Raspberry Pi CM4. Cool. So, sorry for that squirrel. That is very interesting. Uh, Folk Knowledge you have thought it was the Rust based compiler for the high level synthesis language that you would be particularly interested in. Um, it, it, but which is it? Is it the is it XLS that they're using, or is it um, or is it their own concoction? Does it say? I bet it doesn't say on the um, doesn't. There isn't any links on the um, website for it. Let me have a look under his um, or her. Or there, should I say, uh, repository. Uh, so there's the. Um, ah, here we go. Meowality HLX. HLS. So I think this is Gatecats rather than XLS. Yeah, he's got his own. They've he's, they've built their own AST. So, ooh, wonder if we can see an example. Bear with me. Back end, code gen. If they got an example, main dot rs.
Mm. So the compiler's written in Rust as well. Yeah, because XLS is actually written in Python, which is a pain, even though it's a Rust syntax language. Uh, cool, AST, hold on. Does he have any examples? Or do they have any examples, should I say? Design. There's nothing obvious. Um, mm, okay. I think we'll come back round to that at some point. I will go and um, prod Gatecat because I'm sure he's got some examples somewhere. But I'm most definitely interested in it. So I will check that out and come back to you guys on it. Um, so sorry, where were we? So the change from the December configuration, the umbilical between the Black Ice NXT and the um, Ice Logic Bus is Quad SPI, and that overlaps with the same pins that are used for programming the um, the Ice Forty. Um, normally we bit bang that out because it's slightly weird uh, and what the plan was was to have reorganized I was looking at playing around refactoring the code in order to try and be able to dynamically change from bit bang mode to QSPI mode Because in QSBI mode, you don't have control over the select pin because it's done automatically with the transaction uh, parts of the library. And switching between the two is difficult. Now, I, I did play around with it and I got quite close to getting that to work, but it was niggly because. You could do the whole thing as one long, you know, task in, say, RTIC. But the moment you started throwing things off into uh, structures and implementations in a normal Rust way, that ended up hiding the pins behind um, uh, referenced structures. And it this ability to change the pins configuration um, is actually a move. You're, you're moving from one pin to another because they are completely different types. So that meant that you're trying to move it via uh, a reference to a mutated structure. And Russ would complain bitterly about that. So it was a bit painful. And then I thought, well, how about um, I just try hacking around with it to see if I can find another way of do it, doing it. And I actually found another way of doing it. So that's what we're going to have a look at today. And we're going to clean it up because it's really, really, my code is now so ugly um, that I can barely see through it. So let me just get rid of um, this. If we if we need to look at any of the other boards, do let me know because I do have um, keycap versions of them here. By the way, if anyone's interested, um, let me also bring OBS back into the foreground because otherwise I won't see the comments. I see you talking about the gluten free project as well that we were looking at last week. So, Gatinoob. Gatti Noob, um, you're, you're partially responsible for that project, I guess, or working in it. Welcome, by the way. So um, let's switch over then quickly to uh, the firmware. And whilst I'm cleaning this up, I can explain what I've hacked. So 
So I need to turn that off. Don't need that on. Don't need that on. Do need this on. And let's open black crab. Right, let me know. what the size is like here guys is this text readable or do you want me to increase the size in fact before I start let me just go and refill my water I'm just going to mute you for a sec hold on Back again with refreshment. It's got a very wet base. Let me sort that out. So um, it's readable, I post says. So Getty Noob likes the uh, microblade idea. Um, Sure how cost effective it is. What do you mean from making the microblades themselves? Depends how many you make, I suppose. So you don't need me to increase the size of this text then. So what what I thought I'd do is I'd play around with what we were actually manipulating. So if you remember what we had was we had this uh, soft SPI structure that was responsible for bit banging out uh, the new FPGA image file over the uh, GPIO pins to the ICE40 from the STM32. So we're looking at the Rust code for that firmware. And if you remember, um, these were the three pins that we were bit banging. So we defined in that structure. And then I was trying to add in the alternate ones so that I could switch between them. Plus I was adding in the QS by bus peripheral. And uh, that's when it kind of come unstuck and I got all the other problems. So um, then I thought, well, what, what would be the minimum that we could do? Given that I could tame the clock frequency within bounds that are acceptable for programming the ICE40 rather than default frequency, which was too high, um, could I get it to work by hacking and doing something that I don't ought to? Um, and I thought, what's the minimum? So obviously, I l what I've done here is I've lost the... IO pins that are configured as push-pull for bit banging, the clock 
and the master serial output taken those out but I've kept the uh, select pins which is still in bit bang mode even though I create it in alternate mode so basically all of these pins that I need for QSPI are in alternate mode with the sole exception of the SS which you are not meant to do um, and I haven't seen anyone do that but I figured I'd give it a go and basically then I changed obviously the cre the implementation here has changed what I'm passing in is you know I only four objects um, I then that's the old bit bang version of the uh, reset sequence basically what it does is it kind of um, it, it takes the reset high on the ice 40 it then takes the CS low then it takes it out of reset but keeps the CS low um, that the ice 40 then goes into its slave mode rather than its master mode so it doesn't try to read the image itself it, uh, it awaits an image being sent um, but there's a sequence that you have to do so for example um, we bit banged out eight zeros uh, first uh, this in turn is being controlled by the way um, from the USB task let's just jump to there so what we're doing is we're uh, whenever we get uh, a packet in from the USB here what we're doing is as soon as we recognize that the signature of the FPGA the ice 40 image uh, what we do is we call that reset routine that reset function the implementation of the soft SPI um, then after that reset sequence which has then sent those zeros eight zeros in we pull the select line down and we then send the first byte in this case or however many bytes we've received over USB including the signature um, and that just continues through and then we keep sending all the while this select signal is taken down and then when it's finished um, we have to flush uh, the serial buffers on the ice 40 so we we, we have these um, we basically send another eight bytes um, that are also zero and then we finally at the end of that pull back the select pin so it's a bit different from your normal SPI in that regard because these are not individual transactions these are the CS pin is being manipulated slightly differently and when you're using QSPI the QSPI peripheral manipulates the, S the select pin for you you don't do any of that or at least not on not normally on the STM32 and certainly not with normally with the HAL layer that you get with RAS for the STM32 F7s or any of the others that I've seen even the F4s and the F7 is based on the F4 although there was differences between the F7 and the H7 I noticed um, I think I was trying to get my attention Oh, so you want bigger text. Okie dokes. Sorry. Is that big enough? Or do you want even bigger? Let me pull this in a little bit as well. Do this one as well. Is that visible now? Yeah, good, great. So I guess in Noob was saying, I mean, the microblade thing is pretty much limited in the use to Black Ice NXT and bundling them. Feels quite, feels quirky design-wise. Yes, maybe, but I've got some other plans for that. 
um, to make them more widely available and applicable, to be fair. Um, so yeah, you've got this funky stuff going on that isn't easy to do with QSPI because you don't have the control that you need for the QSPI. So I figured, right, what if I just break break the rules and start bit banging the, the SS, take it from the alternate mode, even though it's set up in the alternate mode, put, put it into the push-pull mode and then start just trying to use it normally. So I rewrote the reset to use QSPI in single mode transactions. So this bit looks very similar. So, you know, we're setting SS high, then reset low. We're, we're setting the SS signal uh, low. Then we're waiting for a while. Then we're pulling ourselves out of reset but we're holding our SS down and then we're releasing it back high. So we're getting it into slave mode as before. So I'm now abusing this pin because I'm using this in a way that is not documented. I'm then building a QSPI transaction uh, and I'm using the single whip, which is, this is all standard QSPI stuff. And I'm gonna send eight zeros in this case. And then I write those eight zeros, which is the initialization. So I do a QSPI write, but manually I'm changing the CS pin. Now normally this will try and mess with the CS pin. So that's the reset sequence using QSPI, or my hacked QSPI. And then the other part that's different is this was the previous send where we bit banged out um, the clock signal and the master output signal and I'm now creating again a single uh, bit width I SPI compatible single character send okay in this case uh, so when I receive a data byte I'm just writing that using SPI, single character, using a single character QSPI transaction, which is one bit wide rather than four bit wide. And then I just use it normally as we were using it before in the USB driver. So it's calling this as if it was calling the bit bang versions and it's manipulating you know the select so it's only pulling it down to the start then it's doing all the sending and then it brings it back at the end rather than leaving the QSPI to do it so if I now run this and then I flip over to um, Why can't I see it? Hello. And again, let me um, increase this size. So here we're looking at the seven segment. Uh, this is an amaranth example that we did before for just getting the seven segment tile to count up, basically. Um, And then I'm loading that up in Python, in my Python console here. 
so I've already pasted that in. I've changed the tile to tile 4, um, but before I do this I need to just make sure I've set up the access privilege to the TTY ACM2 uh, and configured it properly. Now if I go back to the Python console, uh, let's acknowledge that a bit. So I've got the code in the console here uh, and then I can just any really luck. It's funny how that one's smaller. Why is that one smaller? What? Come on, get big. So I'm then going to run the synthesis. And it's done. See how quick that was? It's almost instantaneous because it's using the QSBI peripheral. And it works. What a cool hack. And I couldn't find that documented anywhere, either on the STM uh, side, certainly not on the Rust Howe side, that you'd be allowed to do that. Everything assumes that the select is handled by the transactional controls of the peripheral, not separately. But it works and it's really lovely and simple and super fast. Let me just show you how fast again. So if I'm going to run this again, ready, steady, go. <laughs> it takes longer to go off than it does the program. So fast. And that's only running at a relatively low frequency. I can't remember why I defaulted the... Remember I'm using uh, my own forked copy of the um, STM32 F7 Howl because the QSBI part of that doesn't allow you to change the default frequency. It makes an assumption about the default frequency. It assumes that you want to operate at 108 megahertz, which we don't, because if we tried to program the ICE 40 at that speed, it would fail miserably. It's got a top programming speed because of the access times internally when it's writing into its kind of um, internal memory that I don't think it goes above like 15 megahertz or something. It's much slower than the uh, FPGA parts. Um, IPO says, curious, will you continue to use unwrap for dev and then migrate to handler code? Well, I'll, I'll probably change that a bit later and check for errors and things, yeah. But I'm just hacking at this point. But that works, so it's brilliant. So I've got to refactor all of that and make it look nice. That means that we can move on to maybe doing some QSPI code, which is good. But that, that changes everything, because that means it works very simply without having to do the hackery of changing the pins from GPIO pins and, you know, doing a bit bang version of SPI and then changing all the pins into the alternate modes and then using the QSPI peripheral. We're kind of just hacking one of the pins and the others are staying the same. And that, I couldn't find any, certainly no how documentation that said that you'd be able to do this because normally the transaction controls the select as a matter of process. So let's just go back and clean up some of that code whilst we're here. So that's really good news. Uh, that was a nice discovery. Let's go back to the uh, last here. Go back to Black Crab firmware. So let's just clean all this up because this is a much better way of doing it. I mean, I do have some reservations about possible changes in the future, but I think I'm fairly safe. Um, 
probably don't need half of those. I'm going to have to get rid of some of that stuff. But let's just change the soft SPI implementation now permanently because I don't need all this other stuff anymore. So let's clean a lot of this up. Don't need that. Don't need those. Don't need those. Uh, I don't need these old Bitbang versions anymore. Those can go. And we can lose the, yeah. You can see what I was doing here, actually, with the changing the mode to what you have to do. Uh, it's a bit complicated. And uh, Rusk is really unhappy because this is a, a reference to mutated structure that contains the actual pin. And it doesn't like you changing that, obviously. So um, let's get rid of all that. We don't need all that. That can go now. It's all redundant. Um, and then all of this stuff. Can go. We don't need that anymore. We do need that one. This I'm going to keep in because I might need to change the speed of this pin. But I probably need to change this into a kind of pull up. But I need to come back to it. At the moment it works as is, but we can get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. The mode button we're not using yet. Don't need that. All. Mm -hmm. Mode LED we're keeping as is. This is the other set of QSPI pins. Q2 and then actually that should be called Q0. Uh, Sorry, lowercase. Um, the reason we're using these underscores is because we're not, we're not, we don't use these again after setting them. That's kind of what you do with these alternate modes. If you're not switching, switching into Bitbang, etc. Um, okay, what's this stuff? We don't need any of that. anymore all that experimental crap goes that's the same the clocks are the same USB is the same serial is the same uh, we don't really That, that was just for testing the LED. So, in fact, we shouldn't be setting that anymore. Uh, I'll come back to that. That's the new one, we can get rid of the old soft SPI. Um, we're not using the interrupts yet on there. We don't need that anymore because that's now included in the QSPI. Okay. We can probably get rid of these other tasks as well. I don't think we need those anymore. We might need to use that, copy and paste some of that in a minute. Let me just see if that recompiles first. Some have messed with some of it. Yeah, it's good. Right.
Now the other thing is we want to rename this because this isn't what it says it is anymore. It's not soft SPI. Um, this is really um, this is actually F P A. So when we're referring to it in USB here, we're still calling it SPI. This should really be shared SPI. They're calling it, why have I called it SPI? I need to change that in the code because that doesn't make any sense. Um, so the shared structures, I don't need that. The SPI is now called FPGA. So let's not, let's change this. In this case, I'm just going to use uh, ice. See if that's now changed everything for me. No. No. No, 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 it hasn't. So I call it ice there. The shared structure. Shared ice. Ah, it's because I called it. Right, let's just do ice here and let's rename that. So it's gotten confused. Yeah, because it doesn't understand RTIC, so. I have to do this manually. Wow. Couldn't work that out. Okay, a bit laborious, bear with me. Mm, what doesn't it like about that? Why can't I call it the same thing? I should shadow that. Surely. You watch, I'm going to break everything now. And I'm going to break it here too. Make sure it's all well and truly broken. No point in half breaking something, right? Oh, I'll tell you what I did forget. It's this. In the, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> okay. What have I done? Ice, 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 ice. Ice, ice, baby. Do, do. 
sure if I'd let it do it, it'd probably do it right, but I don't want to take the chance. In case I name something else, SPI. We will soon find out if I've messed it up completely. Recompile it. Uh, what doesn't it like? Three six two, three six two. There's one I haven't changed. Programming. Just make sure it still works. I guess. Synth. There we go. Yeah, it's still working good. So that's now refactored. I should probably let me just. Um, Brilliant. Um, the next thing would be to see if we can transfer over QSPI, I guess. Let me just catch up with the chat. Oh wow, nobody said anything. Right. Before I move on then, um, any questions on what we were doing there? On the firmware changes with regard to using QSPI instead of bit banging, etc. Ooh. Are we doing for time? Yeah, that'll be good. I'm going to need some energy soon. Good break time. Um, we might be able to look at the um, SBI stuff. Remember we did some before? I don't remember how long ago that was. I think we did a QSBI example. Let me have a look. Um, where the hell did we put it? The other thing we've got to look at is the, um, the board file. There's a whole bunch of things that we need changing on the um, Amaranth board file for 
the MyStorm, um, both the ICE Logic Bus and um, the Black Ice NXT. I'll split them similarly to how I did the Ice Core and the Black Ice MX. In that case, the MX board file derived from the Ice Core and just added the MX parts. In the same way, I'll have the Black Ice next board file derived from the Ice Logic Bus commonality, if you like. So the Ice Logic Bus will have defined in it uh, the tiles, so that's obviously attached to the Ice Logic Bus. It will also have um, the Mm, the mezzanine pins are mezzanine specific, so those will end up being, in this case, in the black ice NXT file. One, one other change I just remembered actually, sorry, on the design of the black ice NXT, I've overlapped on one of the blades two of the pins, so on that right hand, oh, this is all reversed around, on the right hand micro blade. The first two pins are also connected to the UART on the STM32. But if that's enabled, you can use it as UART pins, or you can disable it and just use it as part of the micro blade because that might be useful. That may also be useful in the case where you were using it with, say, the SP32 C3 micro blade, because that enables you to program that over the UART. From the STM32 or have the SP32 use the UART to the STM32 so it gives us complete flexibility then. I also haven't finished my decorating from the bank holiday weekend. I've got three quarters of the room done. I've got another wall still to do, but I'm going to do that tomorrow. Actually, the painting wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Although really enjoyable decorating in other news. Um, Though he says, I post, I think this change means that the bit banging won't be needed either for programming or for QSPI from the STM32 to the FPGA. That's right. It's all done via QSPI. The only thing we're still bit banging effectively is the select pin. And that's where we're breaking the rules a bit. That's where we're using some hackery because you're not meant to do that. The how doesn't allow for it. It was just a May Day bank holiday, I post. First Monday in May in the UK. It's always a bank holiday. In fact, most people don't really think it's anything special in the UK. However, um, historically it was quite an important holiday. Um, and I lived in Oxford for a few years many, many moons ago. And in Oxford, certainly they used to really go to town on May Day. What would happen is everyone would be in the pubs all night on, you know, the last day of April. And then all the pubs, what, what would happen is the uh, choir would end up singing from one of the towers near the plane at about six o'clock in the morning or something, really early in the morning, and the pubs open up. So basically people partied all night and then went to the pubs in the morning and everyone celebrates and they have all sorts of stuff going on. So it's very cool. He lived in Oxford, I was there for about three years. It's good fun. So they really go to town on May Day. So 
so yeah, it was bank holiday weekend. It basically means you get Monday as well as the weekend. But yeah, if you're ever in the UK, I post around uh, that time. Stay in Oxford. Party all night and then carry on partying in the morning. It's quite hard going to a, a pub at six o'clock in the morning. But good fun. So we're all okay with that, uh, the firmware changes. I mean, I still need to refactor the firmware and break it into different files and stuff, but it's it, the, the key, key thing is it's now working with QSPI, which is good. So I don't have to change around any of, the, excuse me, any of the pins and all that other stuff that we were talking about before in the previous streams and deal with moving from Bitbang to QSPI, QSPI back to Bitbang. Because it was actually quite troublesome to do that, if you think about it, because we're being driven by an interrupt on the OTG USB part, which is just receiving, you know, certain size packets from the USB. To how we would have done the state machine that controls moving from Bitbanging to, um, to QSPI mode is quite tricky. Because that interrupts, you know, and doing it in the interrupt itself, which is really what that Arctic task is that's handling the USB, um, was, was always going to be a bit weird. So this is kind of nice. And it means that we can clean that up. We can probably turn that into a module or something. I mean, import it, start breaking things up. But <clears throat> now, um, let me switch back. I'm trying to see if we had, we did, I did do a QSPI test. I'm not going mad. I'm fairly sure that we did a QSPI test. Um, because we have the Rust code for it this end. So when we uh, spawn the DSPI here, in fact, it should be QSPI, not DSPI, which is disabled currently after it's been programmed. That would then go and uh, operate this function, which basically just sent over a count, which we were driving the uh, tile proto LED tile, and it would count up if you remember to two five five. Um, so we wouldn't be able to do that again, but we would need the um, HTML, so, sorry, not HTML, the um, Amaranth code that did that, so I'm just trying to find that, so let me just switch back, let's have a look, see if we can find that. Um, <sighs> what did we call it? Oh, was it in the tile tester, maybe? Yes, it was. It was the QSPI LED test, I think. This one. Um... So that, that creates the QSPI, e, the E is because it's got the additional event pin, the QDR pin. Um, and then that was outputting to the pins directly. Now there was something a bit more sophisticated we did than this. Damn it. There was another class. Uh, oh, maybe that was on a different branch. Just kind of look at my branches. Hold on. Uh. 
Let me have a look. No, it wasn't Blackledge. Where did we put it? We had it. I can't remember where we put it now. What is this part of my Storm Ice Logic deck? Probably. And HDL. Amaranth and Samples. Tile Tester. Fuel branches, hold on. Oh. Okay. That's very strange. That isn't showing what we had before. Now, is this a branch thing or is this? Could we create another? Damn it, I can't remember. Hmm, um, which branch are we actually on? Hold on. If I look at this, whatever branch this is currently on, it doesn't show any changes. That's a little worrying. Tile tester, what changes does this show? So diff is a new tap. No. Can I show diff? branches um, I remember when I was messing about with the branches for black crab I remember accidentally creating a new branch on the um, on the um, the ice most on ice logic project as well Don't do that. Delete it. Delete it. No. Is it completing for me? Um.
Porridge in Maine. Oh, I can hear a twinkle. Hello, twinks. What you up to? Wrong side of the door again. I don't understand what's going on here. Where has that stuff gone? <clears throat> Unless I stashed it. Um, right, twin cups. You want to say hello to folks? Mm -hmm. Say hello to the internet, folks. This is Crystal. Oh, I've always known as Twinkle, aren't you? Hmm? Are you happy? Are you looking for food? Is that what you're looking for? Or attentions? Hmm? Or do you want to go out? You want to go out? I see. Right. Your branch is up to date with Origin Maine. Confused about what I've done here. Um, over from the other machine earlier but was that to this directory oh no, what, what directory are we in I might have accidentally overwritten these local files. Um, what I should do is just take, I mean, I could stash, but I don't want to confuse that in case I've stashed something else. So let me, what I probably want to do is just make a backup of this directory temporarily. Um, Well, I wasn't doing the copy before. So I've just made a backup of this um, <laughs> directory because I think I may have missed accidentally. Well, I was trying to copy the latest versions of the CAD over, which happened to be in the same directory, which is my stupid fault because I was going to separate them and never did. 
and I think I've overwritten them. Now I don't know whether I, whether I would have git stashed them or whatever. Um, Let me just check that that's worked actually first. Yeah. Um, so I've got a copy of this now so I can mess with this. Let me first just have a look at the Python console. Let's look def synth. Yeah. The one I've got there is really old. So if I restore to how it was before the copy, I need to go back to the last commit. How do you do that on git? Step back to the last commit. So I want to ignore any changes in the file that currently exist. And step back to the last. What does rollback do? I don't know what rollback on this does. Damn it, I think, uh, yeah, I'm interested in what this bloody rollback does. Rollback changes, two added, 31 modified. I'm just gonna try it, see where it takes me. I don't know how far that's gonna roll back. Is that one commit or what? certainly hasn't solved my problem. This is annoying. So what did the rollback do? Did it change the changes that I've done in the IDE, maybe? God. Um, bunch of unversion files. None of that's to do with the CAD. Oh. oh dearie 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 um crap in here.
Hmm. The answer to this is not obvious. I'm not quite sure what I rolled back. So if I do get status now, what that's going to tell me. Commit. What does that say? Nothing added to commit but untracked files present. So that has rolled back to the previous commit. According to git. Damn it. Whatever I've done is very disruptive. That's annoying. Um, I'm just looking on the um, on GitHub at the versions that are there. See if they look any different. I'm just wondering if any change I made there was not committed back to the um, origin. Which is a tad annoying. Um, so if I look at Tile Tester now. I think, that, yeah, that makes me think that the QSPI stuff we did, we didn't actually commit unless I stashed it. How do I look at stashes? Oh boy. Um, or how do I list local branches even? Right, let me just, um, Check my git foo. Um, uh, this local git branches. I guess I'll do that first. Let me just check. Do that first. Oh, there is a local branch called Flash te Test. Maybe it's there. Hmm, can I switch to that then? Let's try, um, what did I call it? Following untracked work treat files will be overwritten by the checkout. Please move or re remove them before you switch branches. Um, 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 um. 
those I don't mind losing. Um, that one, crikey. Can I force that? If I hang on to it, one of the two files will be overwritten by the checkout. Can I force that? Is it like a minus F? Probably going to regret this. <laughs> Shit. Uh, check out minus F. Oh yeah, it did work. I probably really fuck things now. But I've not got back what I want. <sighs> Shit. That's no different. Oh dear, so it looks like I've lost that, which is a pain. It wasn't an awful lot of stuff, but. Right, well, I'll have to do that for next time then. Um, damn, I'm sure I committed that. I wonder if there's any stashes. show anything on here now. No, no stash. Don't know. Okay. Well, we'll have to do that next time, I'm afraid. I might be able to recover some files somehow. Um, it wasn't a lot of stuff, to be fair. It's just annoying, really. Let me just change this, because this is not correct. Very different. Uh, the relevant code is quite small and you can see it on the screen of your YouTube video. Yeah, I might have to go back through that in order to recapture it. It's not a massive loss, let's put it that way. Oh, you got the time code, well done. Um, what was it? You said April 13th. So I wonder if we can have a look now. April 13th. April 13th. Hold on. Damn it. There's no dates on here. Really bloody annoying. Oh yeah. 13th. Oh no. There's one on the, oh yeah, there is. So if we look at this, what did you say? 
143. Um, Yeah, shame we can't copy and paste from a YouTube video, right? <laughs> transmitting it out on the other clock and it wouldn't matter of course because you're sending it to somebody else which is that new code for me which I think that code will be shared that was the initial use by email we're doing it was a general my, this is just a very specific case I'm just recording the last value so let's just prove that what we are seeing is correct so if we go back now let's count Let's go to, hold on, let's go change the code, let's count a little higher, um, right, yeah, it's come back, clock cycle, if I didn't have the rows, where yeah, exactly does this one start, you've got self.qw, Yes, I remember seeing, I know I saw this, yeah, um, makes sense, and call them tier 10 and S here, L code rather than tier 10, it's the same thing, but you, yeah, you, you don't, Don't look for the rising edge of the CSM node. So this is your code, this one. But it is very similar. Hold on. <sighs> I can't see all of it. How do you end up not resetting things? Bear with me. Oh, because you're continually sending them. But wouldn't that reset the chunk to zero? Whenever on the clock cycle. So what I have here, it was some sort of, um, I can't remember what the class name was now. Let's call it something slightly different to this. Doesn't matter what it's called really. Um, need a module. any other stuff in a minute so what does this say on here um, dot B dot uh, com.
Uh, do, 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 do. So we need a QCK. QCK. Oh no, I did them individually, didn't I? Damn it. Um. Uh, so I would have had. Um, QCK dot equals, oops, equals, hang on. Uh, what did it equal? Oh. going on so I'm putting that in there really Strange. I'm going to have to confuse myself. I can't see all of the code, which doesn't help. I'm going to have to remember how I define these. Q D two 
comment and constant I need to define those above in a second. Um, then the key okay, was if What? Uh, yeah, I post. I, I wiped it out um, earlier today because I just copied. I meant to copy the CAD files over, but I think I copied the entire directory, unfortunately.
reset that. Keep doing the same thing, it's so confusing the syntax. Module dot IF. Um, And we shift in the uh, data bits, shift it around, and add the new bit. Four bits, shift the nipple. See, I'd like to let display would then be set to zero, so we'd lose it. But if you're transmitting it out on the other clock, you don't look for the rising edge of the CSM, it's just recording the last value. So let's just prove that what we are seeing is correct. So if we go back now, let's. Um. Uh, I'd need to create some signals here, wouldn't I? So I'd need a, a QCK would be... Um, 
I guess. Um, I've actually done something funky with the display thing here. Black crab. So on here then. Is that the display? Go up to 16, let's go up to 256. Is that what I'm saying? Well, the first eight. Um, no, I'm not. So now it's going where it's sending 256. Oh, I can't go to 256. I'm using the Let me go to 255. Two. Is display an interim? We're going to be one short of a picnic. So the. Uh, what is display? Here. Is display. An eight bit. This is an eight bit register. No, display's got to be four bit, isn't it? Yay! We get exactly what we expect. I know we won short of a pick. That's because I've then got the two five five. Um. So we know it's doing what we want it. Data is definitely an eight bit. Is display the same as so we LED know display? It's now receiving. Um, and we're doing that at 13.5 megahertz. Oh no, this LED is 12 bit. Display is only 4 bit. So that's on the borderline of stable. Right. You know, according to my request, you know, you need to start at least twice. Is that uh, right? Can you remember, um, Laurie, or anyone? So if I was to start increasing... Is it... Do I repeat that anywhere in the... Um, We're lucky. V is lucky, I. Twinkle, you're back from outside. You've been scoffing biscuits. Mm hmm? Do you want to go through the door? Is that what you want? What have you got on here? Where have you been? So I'm just importing into this part. Go on. Uh, I'm just zooming through the video to see if I am... Um, Show the rest of the code. I just want to double check what I've written here. Makes sense. I mean, I'll I need go any to further. That. We can do I don't think I look at that code again. Strangely. Something useful working anyhow. There should be a way. There won't be any streaming on Friday through. Um, see, I'm just recording the last value. So let's just prove that. But yeah. Um. Hold on. Can I just get a peek? I'm just scanning the video, see if I can see ever. I can only see part of the code. Oh, 
Right, you back again, Twinkle. You can't make up your mind where you want to be, huh? Yeah? Ink display is 8 bits, C129. Hey, Trinkos. Are you wanting to say hello to everyone again? Or are you just in need of lots of attentions? Hmm? Are you again? I'm not your butler, Twinkles. I know you think I am. Yeah, so data was eight, display was eight. Strangely. Nipple was definitely four. The display was as I had it. Uh, I must have changed a few things. Hold on. Did I change the definition of QCK? Yeah, I'm just going back through it. I can see I did change that originally. Why did I change that? Didn't we have some fun messing about with this? Also, I'm being a dimwit. I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> Although we're not really using that.
Um, why is it complaining about that? Or should that be a cat? Um, the other thing is, can I actually fit this on? <laughs> You're going to drive me mad, Twinkle. I'm going to leave this door open now. I wonder if I can fit this tile on here. I think I can. Now I've got the thing upside down, and that's on tile three, I guess. LED tile test, right? Let's run the normal test first. Oh, twinkles. I really can't help you at the moment. I don't know what you want. Um. do this let me just change this back actually These are all going to be different than I, damn it. Let's make a note of these quickly. Before I lose this, Pretty cool. I'm trying to write some code. Bloody cats, you'd have them. What? What did I just fucking do there? 
Vamos. <laughs> difficult myself undocking my bloody windows um, sorry I'm just um, doing the other code that I'm missing to change oh. I know it's nothing to do with the example we're working on now, but I don't want to lose what I did with this. Right, back to where we were. I need to import rows. Right. 
that. Sorry about this, folks. Made it very difficult on myself. I do any of this oh what can I see rows if I'd already imported that The LED test and LED test old. Just change that back temporarily. What I want to do is just make sure that the LEDs actually bloody work first. Something off. Oh, I can't find the ice logic deck now. Shit. Good. And then... 
No, 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 I didn't like it. What have I done? Oh, it's because I'm doing this. Right. To do it again, shit, I might have confused it. Not playing ball. Why is it complaining about... Oh. I know what I'm doing wrong. Jesus. Start again. And this is... LED TARDIS. Let's do this first and then work our way forward. LED TARDIS. So it's the right time and it's counting up. So let's try the next thing, which is um, to use what it is what I need to do in order to test this is right we're just going to switch back to well I'm going to just change that and test to that in fact let's just leave that here and do that let's copy that and do that but with this signal Uh, this class rather okay so we're ready to go there but we need to change the rust 
itself. Because what we need to do is we need to do this. Um, I don't want to run it as a separate task. I want to do it in the same same thing here. So I'm going to reproduce this in here. Just hold on, let me just copy this. And what we can do is just paste that temporarily into here. Do we already have a count? Bike count, so it'll be all right. needs to go in here.
Oh, it's being pedantic. What is it? But we needed to lie. Before we do this. Just want a few. Um, So I'm now running that, so I've now got the QSPI code in there to run. It should send a bunch of, it should, send, should count to 255, I think. Um, about what I've done. I'm <laughs> sure I've missed a step doing it in a hurry. Let's just so this time what we want to do is we want to do that. Doesn't it look? What doesn't it like? It's got a problem in. Did 
Did I copy that across? Maybe I didn't. Let's just do that again before doing this. That problem. It's got a problem with something I'm naming here. Wait a minute. Build resource error. Resource QD naught. Ooh, QD naught here. This maybe. Do you see anything, Laurie, that I've missed? This error is really weird. Resource error. Resource QD zero doesn't exist. Can't see Amaranth window. Oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, God, I'm going snow blind. <laughs> Can you see it now? So I've run this using the new QSBI load test, but what it's saying here is that this resource doesn't exist. It's referring to that. Did we go through this? No, I mean, it worked when we did the. Uh, did the previous. Um, do I have an out of date version of the platform file? Good point might not be designed properly here <sighs> I bet that's what it is oh I better check the um So pinouts. Let me just check. I don't think I changed any of this, but so what am I saying? QDs. Uh, QCK. I'm saying it's H9. QCK. This is definitely wrong. <laughs> Shit. BL10.
Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Changed any of these? That's this K ten. K ten. QDR. Shit. QDR. Right round is all. Damn it. We've got LB and HB, which is L5 and K6. But I can't remember which order. Off the top of my head. Shit. Okay. So LB. LB goes to LB. LB is K six. the West 37. K6 to West 37. K6 to West 37. Get the other way around, so that's K6 and L5. Save. Don't know if I can just run this again. Will it pick up the changes? No, it doesn't. Do I have to re import that? Song to reload because it's external <sighs> and then do a new 
Python console and then let's reload all this shit again. Please work. No, what have I missed? Name P is not defined. What? Who is it referring to? Name error P is not defined. Sorry, this is really small. P, where did the P come from? I've got a typo in here somewhere. Name error P is not defined. Where the fuck is P from? Nine sixty eight in the library. Is that Oh, there's P. Hmm. Okay. Quite right. Maybe that should be zero. Let me just remind myself. Should be zero, not P. What the fuck? That's really strange. <laughs> Doing my head in. All right, let me try again. Blimey, this is much more difficult than it should have been. Of course, had I flipping committed in the first place, wouldn't be having this problem, would I? Silly me. Has it stopped running? No, it's still running. Oh shit. I know what the problem is. Hold on. Oh, this is one of the pain in the ass things about this. Oh, no, I'm not going to run that here. Let me run that in a separate console. Is it enumerated under a different... Uh, right, I have to disconnect and reconnect. 
pain in the ass. Bear with me. Sorry, folks, this shit happens. Let me disconnect the hub and then reconnect the hub. Then rerun it. So I am rerunning the firmware. That time it picked it up. I should have noticed that last time. But I didn't. So let's do this again. Don't think I have to reload for this. Okay, well that looked healthier, but it hasn't worked. Has it crashed? It still seems to be running okay. So, um, basically, yeah, it's not working. So, something is wrong. LED is 12, no. LED test. That's the one we're running, isn't it? Just an LED test. That's the right tile, but I think we've already tried that already. Um, okay. Fair enough. Can we do something here? Delay, that would definitely happen. Does this happen? What was, what can we do? Can we do a print here? Maybe. What? I'm just going to put a print statement in. Debug print. What the hell is going on? Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I hate this shit. Okay, right. Yeah, I've just overwritten my um, keyboard. <laughs> the ports have got mixed up. Let me just check where I am. Working again. This is annoying. Oh. So now my keyboard is on ACM2. <laughs> the development board's on ACM0. God, I hate this shit. Hold on. It drives me mad, this bollocks. Uh, if I disconnect that. And then I do that. In. I'll check my deep message. <sighs> so that should be on zero now, and then if I run. Firmware, hopefully it should come up on the right port now. Uh, 
Yeah, two T. It should work now. God, I hate this. So what was happening there was uh, I'm bringing up the wrong. Um, my keyboard comes up as an ACM port. I've got three ACM ports. I've got the ST Link, which has one. I've got the keyboard, which has one. And then I've got the device under test in this case, which is the Ice Logic board coming. Or in fact, no, it's the Black Ice NXT board coming up as an ACM. So if they change order, which they did because I had to reset the hub, then basically I was trying to send the program, trying to pro trying to program the FPGA, but it was actually sending it to a keyboard, which then disables the keyboard. <laughs> I have to plug it in and go back in and then change the order and unplug them, otherwise you end up in the wrong order. So let's try it now. ACM2. Uh, it doesn't seem to work. Have I actually done anything here? Yeah, my keyboard's still working, that's a good sign. But that didn't work. Um, definitely didn't program the. Um, no, that looks to screw. That was my. Then the arm of my chair I just noticed it's moving. reload this it's definitely working now I hope oh that's looking healthier um, so that actually reprogrammed it this time which is a good sign but Said some sort of issue. Definitely not counting up, that's for sure. Hmm. Let me just recopy all of this in case I've messed something up. It's entirely possible with my stupidity. Probably going to be the same anyhow. Let's just do it. Oh, that's weird. Let's just do this first. Get rid of that on the new Python console. I don't like what that was saying. Copy, paste. Okay, well it's not working, but it is programming by looks of it. So there's a problem with our HDLI, I would imagine, or the pinouts. Wow, 
Oh, right. Um, so there's a mistake in our HDL somewhere. Could be the pinouts. Um, could well be the pinouts in the um, in this file here. Let me just look at the schematic again. Right, so 37 is definitely GD2. S37. It's definitely QD2. LB QD two LB K six. Yep. Goofy must be L five. Yep. QD one K nine. Zero now. Could I have the? Oh, let me just check the clock. I will turn. QSS K10. I wonder could I have QD1 and 2 mixed up? K9 and J9. I don't think I've got the manual anyway, but it's easy to do so. Save. And then come back to here. Reload again. Uh, so I have to quit this. Does not have a package name K9. Oh, fucking. Excuse my French. Good job this isn't for children. I must use caps. Damn. So stupid. So you're very, very stupid. In fact, Yeah, that's no different. Our problem lies elsewhere. In fact, I'm going to go and change that back.
Oh, dearie, dearie me. So it should be back to normal now, which is not working, but back to the same code. Yep, it's not working. We're missing something else here. I don't know what it is. I might need to get the logic analyzer on it. <laughs> I post this gone for food, don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to give up in a minute. Um, because I need to look at the logic analyzer. And I haven't mapped the pins out for that yet. And I have to hook it up and everything else. So I might do that and solve it offline, folks. Uh, Laurie was saying um, it'd be good if you could put this version of Rust and HTML on GitHub soon so we can look at it. Yeah, I'll probably get that done tomorrow. Ooh! Okay, I'm calling it quits. Um, I'm not sure what the problem is. I need to... I'm, I'm probably not going to stand a chance unless I actually look at the um, QSPI signals on the logic analyzer. Which means I need to add some code in there that um, takes that to a PMOD port on the Black Ice NXT. I can then plug in my um, logic analyzer and look at the signals and see what we're actually sending and receiving. Make sure all the signals are actually going through as well. And I'm, you know, when I've typed this out, God knows, maybe I've made a mistake somewhere. Not that one, this one. Anyhow, let's call it quits for now. Um, let's see how I get on. Might do another one on Friday. Possibly. But thank you for hanging around, guys. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening, those that have got them left. I think I'm going to go and collapse on the chair, actually. Ciao.